Okay, so this meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for connecting to this info share. And I am Maria Isabel Gandia, as you can see here. I work for CSUC and I'm also working at the GM43 project on behalf of Rediris in Work Packet 6, Task 2. And what in what we informally call consensus building because we try to reach consensus on, on orchestration, automation, and virtualization, and we call it OAV too. I'm going to talk here now in the first presentation uh, about the reasons for OAV and also the reasons why we are working on it and what we are doing about it. OEV, you are probably aware of the benefits of orchestration, automation, and virtualization. It's not just for uh, giving uh, you something automatic instead of manual. It has many benefits. And going through a digital platform and being able to go to a digital platform instead of having separate system is one of them. And one of the benefits is, of course, that you're going to be faster to deliver your services because you are going to be able to offer your customers the possibility of creating things and having them done in one click. This is something that you cannot do manually. It's also going to reduce the number of human errors if you are automating things and you are following processes. It's not just automating. If you just automate a mistake, you are going to propagate that mistake around the network. So it's not like it, you are going to avoid errors. Humans can do errors also when programming, but it's easier to, to see what, what is going to be bad if you do it. And it's going to reduce the number of, of problems there. This is one of the points too. It's going to decrease the number, the, the manual work, and this is going to make you more efficient because if you are going to do the same thousands of times, you only need to program it once, you need to put it in one place, and then it's going to be able to be repeat many times without the need for manual work. It's also going to lower the cost of service delivery because you're going to do things more efficient, more, more, more faster than they were before. And you are going to also ensure your configuration consistency if you follow processes that are going to, to work with standards. So your configuration is more consistent and you are complying with your configuration policies through this. You're also be going to be able to provide a better reporting. You probably have reports and they are done automatically, of course. With automation, you can automate the, the way you are reporting and how you are doing it. And you're also going to increase your efficiency. So what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to promote the usage of, of OAV general principles in the NREN community. We want the NREN community to be aware of, the, of all these benefits and to, to be aware of all the principles that we think are fine for the research and education networks. <coughs> When we started the project, uh, we knew that we had to work on OAV because many, many inputs were that we had to work or do something around orchestration, automation, and virtualization, but there was not a clear direction, not a clear thing. And we also knew that entrants were in different stages of their journeys or their, their status around orchestration, automation, and virtualization. So we needed to first see what you needed uh, to ask what you needed and, and try to find a little bit of consensus. That's why we did a survey with several sections. You can see all the sections here and the different questions were classified in this in this in the sections. But you have all the results and also the results of the discussions we had with the community in several meetings in the PDF that, that is linked here and that you have in the Indigo page of this info share. It was like a study of the current status, the existing network and services platforms, this is the OSS and BSS, the current OAV use cases and services in the community, and also the OAV challenges and priorities that the Yandrans had, and the ideas for the future, the, use, the future use cases and services that people foresee. We also asked how the GIAN community could help or the GIAN project could help on that. And I'm not going to go in depth into all the survey questions, of course. I'm going to show a couple of, of questions or a couple of answers for each one of them. And you have all the, all the answers in the link. In the first section, the existing networks and services platform, we saw that there was not a lot of automation or orchestration around operation support systems and business support systems. 
and it means that there was a scope for more OAB in the community. And we also saw that there was a wide variety of components and systems that were already in use that uh, that bold you see here with so many names, Ansible, Cacti, Jira, Nervios. These are tools and, and existing systems that are well understood by the community and do the job. And because of the lack of resources, the entrants reported that they were slow to change and adapt to the needs for more automation because what they had was already fine for them. There was no common or single direction to go or best practice for them for OAB. And there was a little use of standard data models and APIs that could facilitate OAB. When we ask about the current use cases and services, and when we ask the entrance where they started, if they started on automation, on orchestration, or on virtualization, they usually started with automation. And this is doing something that was doing what was done manually, automatically. This is provisioning, BGP configuration, etc. And most of the entrants do something, or, or that the entrants that do something do something around automation. And this is like, uh, well, Automation is the first thing that goes into production, but it's not changing a lot in the way they work. 60% uh, of the entrants were not changing or were not mentioning any strategy concerning orchestration, automation, and virtualization. And strategy is also important because it's it's like if you only change what you do what you used to do manually by something automatic, it has benefits. If you also try to go one step farther and think about what you can achieve if you have automation in your network and what you can offer to your customers, then it's going to offer much more benefits for you because you are going to change processes. You're going to avoid human errors, of course, but you're going to be able to offer much more to your customers. Uh, we also saw that most of the entrants do not have interdomain OAV, interdomain services, I mean, and and there is space for this too. We saw that only 19% of the entrants are doing some kind of interdomain. This means um, among entrants, but also um, between the entrant and the campus and between the entrant and Jan. 81% of them were not doing anything. And that this was two years ago. In the meantime, more and more cloud services are appearing. Campus network management as a service offerings have also increased. And the need for multi-domain is probably bigger today than when we asked, and that was at the beginning of last year, the beginning of 2019, that was that would be a question for you if you have changed your mind since then. When we ask about the skills they thought they needed to do OAB, or the, the entrants needed to do OAB, they mentioned software skills, of course, and they also mentioned that they would like to have kind of a unicorn or unicorns that are network engineers that have uh, software development skills or software developers that have networking skills. And this is something that is not easy to find. They need additional personnel, they need additional skills, software development skills, and they need to train their engineers that was mentioned several times. And also to have more knowledge to get this strategy to go through OAB. Entrants have many operational priorities. That's normal. The, the operation of the network is a priority number one and they have pain points. And so it's not easy to to do a big step for them in, in some cases. And the most popular area for OAV to be applied was network operations and maintenance. And they mentioned the lack of human resources with networking and software development skills many times. But they were open to using OAV, of course. It was just that maybe they didn't have the time. For future OAV use cases and services, we saw that the majority have short-term plans and not so many have more long, th long term thinking. Half of the entrants more or less plan to implement some interdomain orchestration or automation in the future. Remember that only 19% of them are doing it right now, but 50% of them say they were going to do it in the future. And when we asked how the Jian community could help, most of them said that Jian should organize a training or workshops around OAV. They also mentioned that they could have assistance with providing data models and methodologies for automation and orchestration. So that means they need collaboration from us. It's a collaborative approach. And with this collaborative approach in mind to the OEBGN community, we saw that there was a strong need for collaboration and exchange of knowledge and, and expertise. That knowledge was mentioned as a gap many times that we speak different languages. And that a generally accepted blueprint for architecture was needed. This was mentioned in the survey, even, even if we don't ask, if we didn't ask the, what they needed, they said they needed some kind of architecture blueprint. And Andrans also said that 
they want to to know but they want to share this is good about our community because uh, people in the research and education world are very open to share their experiences and learn from others and this is also something that we can we can see so in the jam project with all these inputs we we built some focus groups to work around all these topics we created the focus groups you see here and we we were a group of people from different entrants working on these topics on terminology to find a common a common terminology or a common way of, of speaking about orchestration automation and virtualization and we published a document with a glossary and the definitions because there was no single document for them then architecture we, we trying to find a blueprint for all the entrants to be able to use their own tools their own flexibility their own processes but be able still to to talk to each other we we had a focus group on CNS. We have a focus group on, on campus network as a service, as a use case for automation. We have an OAB public wiki to publish all the information we have around OAB, including a community portal. Our OAB training to prepare this training you asked for, and also DTN as another use case. So today we're going to speak about all these things we have done more or less, and especially focusing on architecture and training. Our agenda for today, unfortunately, I have to tell you that Sonia Filiposka, who was going to do the first two presentations, is not able to be with us today, but I would like to thank her for all the work she has done. And we have uh, three people that are going to do the presentations for her. This is Suzanne Nigel Jackson is going to do the architectures part. Then uh, Roman Lapach and Jacobos Joanno are going to talk about the mapping of the entrance architectures to a blueprint. And finally, I'm going to to explain a little bit of the training, the wiki and the pamphlet we have done. And finally, we have an open discussion, but of course, after each one of the presentations, if you want to ask anything, feel free to, to ask or even interrupt us if there is any question that is something that you want to, to ask. With this, I thank you for following this presentation. If you have any questions, I'm open for them. Any questions from the audience? If not, we can talk at the end, no problem. And Suzanne Nagel Jackson is now going to talk about the architecture work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria Isabel. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, then yes. let me share the screen. Okay, you should see this okay now. As Maria Isabel already said, um, I will present uh, part of the work that we have been doing in this architectures focus group. And as you have heard, uh, everybody is trying to move towards digital platforms and automation now. And it's not just the service providers uh, who would like to automate daily routines and things they have to do over and over and just make sure they have more time available. It's also the customers that um, customers are now used to, to self-service portals. They are used to being able to uh, request services whenever they want. And um, so this is something that basically both uh, customers and providers uh, want to have. But when you move towards digital platforms, you want to do it in an agile manner, of course. You want to keep flexibility or increase it, and the same with interoperability. You want to keep it and increase it as much as you can. So how can everybody streamline not only their uh, organization to move to digital platforms, but how can it be streamlined in a community so that things can be still collaborative, that we can have collaborative digital services and all work together and basically understand each other and automate our organizations, but still keep that interoperability. This was the question that we tried to answer. So we looked at architectures. I don't know about you guys, and if you still have room on your Santa's wish list, but if you wanted to have the perfect architecture, this, in our opinion, would be the components or the characteristics that you should ask for. 
you would want to have a modular design. You would want to have a common information model. Of course, you would want to have full automation support. And you don't want to be locked into a specific vendor. It should be uh, an architecture that's at least um, offers multi-vendor support. Of course, you want to have standardized abstraction and functionality for your modular design. And it continues. You want open APIs. You want global services that you can possibly offer. And as an NREN, you want a solution that's suitable for research. Uh, it may be that you have to implement something um, that is not very common yet that uh, some research group suddenly asked you for. So you want to have uh, flexibility when it comes to resource types. Um, ideally, you want everything to be technology and service agnostic so that if something else comes along next year, you will be ready and you won't have to change your whole system again. Um, you want composite services, you want security, of course, and you want to be scalable. You want to have orchestration and so forth and so forth. The list is very long, but we are very optimistic. So we thought maybe there is already an architecture out there that could actually provide this. So we looked at a number of architectures. Uh, we looked at TM Forum frameworks, for example. We looked at MEF. We looked at Etsy ZSM, Etsy Ghana, Etsy NFV. Uh, we looked at GVM and SENS, ONAP and others. And um, we, while we saw that they're all a bit different and doing things differently, when we compared them, we saw that there are actually patterns or the, the same kind of ways of thinking that are underlying uh, most of these frameworks and most of these architectures. And they basically all focus on the same kind of um, things you could say. And uh, we were wondering if we could just sum up a reference that basically everybody could do their own architecture. But when it comes to a, a blueprint or a reference, we would all agree to one such thing. So what would that reference architecture be like? Um, what all of these, uh, most of these common principles and guidelines were that uh, you have to have a very modular approach that makes you flexible. And uh, if you have a discrete set of reusable components and open APIs, you can easily add a component and um, or take one away. And it, it just makes the thing very flexible and interoperable. But of course, you also want to have the Vegas rule. The Vegas rule says what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And it should be the same for your organization. You may not want to do something like another organization. You, you, what you do within your organization is your own business and it should stay that way. But you should still talk the same language, understand what others are talking about, maybe understand uh, the same kind of um, uh, functions you want to have, have the same kind of legal blocks that then can uh, form this pattern and this blueprint and uh, we can all find a way forward that's um, that's collaborative and interoperable. So looking for that reference architecture, we looked also at the ODA reference architecture from TM Forum, open digital architecture. It is industry agreed, um, so that has advantages. And it is a true reference. It's not an architecture that you have to follow. It is really a reference. It defines functional blocks like legal blocks um, and it's completely technology agnostic. So you can add technologies, you can uh, come up with something new and it, it still would fit within that reference. So it could serve as a blueprint um, for digital platforms in our community. So what does it actually look like? The, these are the functional blocks that you have in ODA. You have the engagement management block. This is actually your external 
uh, interface to everything outside to your customers. This is where you would have your self-service portal, your graphical user interface, your front end, basically. Then you have a block that's called party management. This is where you would describe the who and why. You would have your customer database here. You would have your partners, your multi-domain partners here. Um, you would also define user roles and uh, permissions, for example. Then you would have your core commerce management block. This would be the commercial view to your product, your service. You would have your product catalog here. Um, you would define your SLAs there. You would do um, um, your orders, uh, your billing, all the problem handling from customers. This would all be in that block. Then you would have a legal functional block that is called production. And in production, this is the block where you would actually implement the service. You would actually implement and provision the link, or you would provision the VM in that block. This is the block where you would have um, that. It's basically the only block that interfaces with your underlying infrastructure and with your resources. And you could have a technical view to your resources uh, for each resource and for each uh, technology, you would have um, a different abstraction. So you could still use the same customer facing services and resource facing services in your orchestration. And then you would have the intelligence management block where you would do all your analytics, your statistics, your trend analyses to see where your services are going or where maybe you need to buy more equipment and so forth. And then of course you also have the decoupling and integration fabric that would then allow you to uh, exchange data between all these blocks and do uh, cross domain um, uh, orchestration. So if we could all identify components like this and the APIs and we could automate and orchestrate based on such a reference model like ODA where you agree on these um, functional blocks, uh, we could have standardized patterns and interfaces and we could move then on that uh, journey to multi-domain and federated services. And so um, to see how the, the diverse ecosystem of uh, entrants and architectures that we have in our community, how these could be mapped to ODA, we did some examples. And uh, Roman, uh, in our next segment, he will give you some examples on how some of these entrant architectures can actually be mapped to ODA. So this is the end of my presentation. Roman will take over with the, the examples for the mapping. Are there any questions? If you want, you can raise your hand in the participants list or you can just talk. I see Maria has a tick in her, in her participant list. Do you want to ask anything, Maria? Or Marisha, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. I think it's just a question related to the mark that okay. stayed, but no problem. No okay, problem. okay, no problem then, sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Suzanne. If there are no questions now, we will go to Roman. We will give the floor to Roman to start okay. uh, talking thank about you. mapping. Thank you. So let me share the screen. Okay, can you can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay, great. So uh, mappings. Uh, one thing. Okay, why mappings? Uh, we decide to prepare uh, some mappings between ODA architecture and selected NRNs architectures. Uh, they can be very useful to to highlights 
the main characteristics and functionalities of the selected network architectures. They can help to, the mappings can help to, to use common terminology, right? Common definitions of some components, functionalities, etc. Uh, also such mappings uh, may help to compare architectures and to exchange the, the knowledge and experience gathered during uh, designing and uh, implementation of uh, architectures. Also, the mappings uh, can show the gaps and uh, what's missing in the uh, architectures, implemented architectures, and potentials. So, uh, uh, we knew when we started the work on mappings that there are some uh, NRNs with advanced uh, solutions uh, for network service management based on automation and orchestration. So one of them was uh, SurfNet. So uh, we decided to, to analyze uh, the SurfNet architecture. Uh, with the great help from, from SurfNet guys. So if someone from SurfNet is right now with us, so thank you very much for, for your support, for your help, uh, for your time discussing with us on your implementation. So here uh, in this slide, you can see the, the concept, the architecture of the uh, network service management that is uh, that has been implemented in, in SurfNet. So uh, SurfNet uh, has uh, some, some, some goals, some requirements regarding goals. Uh, the focus one on uh, the, the main goal was the, the focus on customers, right? To, to, to give some control to, to the customer also to uh, provide services uh, in uh, in shorter time span. Uh, also, SurfNet uh, wanted to eliminate uh, a manual configuration in their network devices. All should be automated and uh, and uh, hide uh, uh, behind. Uh, uh, tools, right, uh, and, and some, some portals. Uh, we'll, we'll say more about this uh, later. So regarding requirements, uh, um, one of them was a single point of truth in the system. So uh, the information should be stored in the inventory. So if the network does not reflect the information in the inventory, then it needs to be reconfigured so that it corresponds to the inventory, right? Another important requirement was uh, <clears throat> uh, the use of solid information model. So uh, consistent modeling of resources and services across components and interfaces should be there. Yeah? Uh, next, the, the coupling and well-defined interfaces. So all components are accessed in this system via well-defined REST APIs based on the shared information model. So you can see here in the picture many components uh, with APIs. Uh, most of them are reusable, so they can be used uh, for different services. Um, next uh, important requirement was automated administration. So <clears throat> network engineers use the same should use the same approach as customers when they need to add or, or change network configuration. And the last very important, maybe not last, but very important uh, um, requirement was uh, to have uh, predefined processes for service provisioning. So for example, a, a workflow is defined with all the standardized steps necessary to deploy each specific service type. Uh, some components uh, have been implemented by, by SurfNet. Uh, some of them are uh, commercial products. So, um, um, right. Um, 
I'd like to emphasize the, the presence of uh, orchestration in the, in, the, in the central point. Um, this, this element is responsible for, for workflows. Also very important element is a, a dashboard that is a front end for the graphical interface. And um, right now, uh, SurfNet has um, the implementation of four um, domains, uh, technological domains, for example, a service domain that is based on MPLS network. And each uh, domain has its own orchestrator. For example, for service domain, uh, the orchestrator is uh, uh, NSO from, from Cisco. So we uh, mapped this architecture to uh, ODA architecture from TMF. So here you can see this, um, the distribution of the surface component. Uh, Suzanne uh, presented the functional blocks of ODA. You can see them here as well. With, with the components uh, implemented or used by, by SurfNet. So the left side in the engagement management, you can see uh, the dashboard for, uh, for the user with authentication component and NSI API for, to, for integration with other external NSI enabled applications. In the party management, the, the, the important element is CRM to store information about users, right? Um, what else in, in core commerce management, I'd like to emphasize the product, product catalog that contains information about uh, products offered by, by SurfNet. SurfNet uh, has two types of uh, uh, products for internal users and external users. All of them, the information about all of them is, is in, in this component. Uh, there is also another interesting component in core comments management block called product ordering. It keeps information about uh, ordering statuses. It's uh, implemented <clears throat> with the use of Jira. Also, there is a component uh, that stores information about the uh, issues with the use of travel tickets, the same implemented in Jira. In production um, block, uh, the, the key element I would say is orchestrator that is uh, responsible for um, workflows. There are a uh, number of supporting um, components like CoreDB that stores information about uh, in service instances, uh, IMS component to store information about resources, IPAM uh, with the, for IP address management. Uh, here we have also uh, components to store information about ordering statuses for services and resources. The same is for, for, for uh, issue information, travel tickets. Both components are on top of JIRA as well. And uh, below you can see uh, again for uh, technical domains, right? On the right side, um, intelligence management blocks, block contains, um, uh, for example, monitoring uh, data stored in Influx database. Uh, I know that SurfNet is also, uh, also works on uh, analytics based on machine learnings algorithms. Um, yeah. So this is uh, uh, for SurfNet architecture. Mm. Next uh, architecture that we decided to, to, to map to ODA uh, is uh, service provider architecture that we work, that we develop in, within the Jean project. 
in this picture, you can see the components uh, of it. Um, it's very similar to what uh, ServNet uh, did. So the concept is very similar. So we have, we have uh, uh, a set of reusable components um, that can be used for different uh, serv network services. Here in this picture, you can see also external components, uh, for example, OpenS NSA agent. Um, this is the, the, this picture presents the deployment for GCS service, uh, Jean connection service that is production right now in, in, in Jean infrastructure. So uh, here you can also see a uh, front uh, graphical interface uh, for the user. It's called self-service portal, service orchestrator responsible uh, for uh, processes, processes like uh, create a circuit, terminate a circuit or deactivate the circuit. Uh, all the, 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 the processes are done automatically. Uh, just like in ServNet uh, architecture, you can see here uh, supporting uh, components like service catalog that stores information about services, CRM for users, uh, for information about users, order management to, to, to keep information about uh, order statuses. Here in the implementation uh, of SP, uh, in Jean implementation, it's based on uh, OTRS, not Jira. We've got there also uh, uh, inventories, uh, service and resource inventories to keep information about service instances and resources. We've got that component uh, service activation to, to integrate with external um, uh, application. Here is, uh, for example, with OpenSA. And we've got service testing to, 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 to run regular or on-demand tests of services. So we did mapping for SPA. Again, the picture is very similar uh, what we what you saw uh, for uh, surfnet architecture. So we have uh, functional blocks, ODA functional blocks. On the left side, uh, engagement management with, with the portal and edugain a component for authentication. Uh, party management contains CRM to store information about users. Core commerce management stores catalogs, catalog uh, uh, order management, problem management components. And production uh, contains orchestrator with other supporting components, right? And you can see uh, one, technical domain, uh, it's it's Jean network, uh, Ethernet network. On the right side, uh, intelligence management with uh, monitoring the data, right? And, and relevant components for it. Um, I mentioned that uh, in, in both uh, uh, architectures, API open, standardized APR, APIs are very important to communicate uh, um, between uh, uh, components. So um, in, S in the SPA platform, uh, we use uh, TMF, open APIs. And in this picture, you can see that um, almost each component uh, has an a TMF uh, API, so it's it's very useful. So if if you want to replace some component with uh, some something um, uh, different, uh, but uh, that has the API a TMF API, it's it's possible. So no no problem to re to replace some. Uh, some components, the, the implementations. Right? The, the most important is to uh, to still use uh, TMF open APIs. Uh, yeah, that's all from my side regarding to to mappings for SPA and uh, Surfnet, Yakovos, uh, and any questions regarding them. 
I have a question. Uh, yes, please. Say something about the uh, orchestrator software that's in use at the uh, Cheyant, at the la latest, uh, the last picture that you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Showed. So this uh, component is uh, implemented uh, with the use of uh, activity uh, uh, library from from Apache. So uh, it is possible to to define uh, to define uh, processes. So uh, so for each actions uh, in the portal, for example, create a circuit, end-to-end -end circuit. Uh, we have a, a separate process. The process uh, calls um, uh, other components, supporting components, to get some 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 data to, to do some actions, right? So uh, right now we have few few processes to instantiate the service, so it, uh, to 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 create a link, end-to-end -end link in GCS service, to to terminate uh, the link, to to deactivate and activate, yeah. Okay, so it's b mainly based on uh, on activity. Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, ah. yeah, it's it's activity, it's implemented in J Java. I know that in Surfnet, uh, you have your own implementation, right, in, in Python. Yeah, it's a homegrown. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, uh, so, mm -hmm. please. It's something we're uh, we're working on to to open source it in the in the next uh, few months. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, well, we'll announce that uh, we will announce uh, that when, once it's uh, once the first release is available, and we of course hope that uh, many people will uh, take a look and uh, and uh, make comments. Um, but I was just interested in uh, what's currently in place uh, at other environments. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah, activities uh, library is is very useful. We we don't, uh, in fact, we uh, we don't we didn't have to change anything there. We all only add processes as uh, as a separate uh, classes, right? Java classes. So uh, it's it's very useful and it's easy to to add new processes. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. So Thanks. It's. it's um, and activity is a part of uh, maybe that's information for developers. Uh, part of uh, uh, Tomcat in our case, so we use Tomcat to to run activity. Okay, thank you. If no further questions, so I'll ask uh, Yakovos to continue with the mappings prepared for Synet architecture. So let Hello. Me Thank you very much, Roman. Let me share my screen also. <clears throat> and, and can you hear me okay? Great. Uh, my name is Jacobo Sioannou. Uh, I, with the uh, Architecture Focus Group, we have done the CY net mapping. CY net uh, uh, is a small organization, small earner. And then and and to I have to say the following, we just start the journey to OAV. Uh, we have at CYNet currently virtualization. And the reason that we have done the CY auto mapping is to uh, put automation and orchestration in the CYNet. So therefore, the CYNet main requirements are in order to have one place for network configurations, automation through orchestration, flexible and dynamic de design and that focus on security, standardized interfaces using REST application interfaces, well-defined workflows with standardized steps, in order to de deploy specific service, service types and move towards different technology domains. Uh, here is what we have uh, identified as existing architecture components and mapped to ODA. Uh, you can see easily that uh, we have virtualization uh, with, uh, automation is not uh, mature enough in CYNet, but uh, uh, let me explain 
the other mapping and you will see uh, what we have done. So for the users, we have engineers, RE, IT directors, students, lecturers, international users using uh, the uh, our uh, network. Uh, for the engagement management, we have a web page that provides information about services, our home page that provides marketing information, and uh, we contact uh, through uh, with other uh, the universities in Cyprus and uh, and provide marketing materials using Office 365. Uh, for management users and party management of our customers and partners, we use Azure, OpenLDAP, and Excel worksheets in order to have a uh, uh, clear, uh, uh, clear storage and uh, to monitor the users and their roles. Uh, for core commerce management, we use Excel worksheets for peer inquiries and customer requests. We have web page service connect component that provides information about the, our product catalog. Uh, we have RTIR uh, for uh, request tracking and incident response uh, ticketing system uh, for SLA and SLA tracking along with work Excel worksheets, of course. For production, we use Excel worksheets for inventory. We keep our inventory in Excel. We have real-time monitoring using Persona, SNMP monitoring using NIOS and Office 369 for employees notification and arrangement. Uh, we have also the RTIR monitoring for installations, troubleshooting, and for workforce management, along with the security instances, uh, uh, security uh, uh, tickets that relate with uh, if we have any issue with securities, with security in the organization. Uh, in the technical domain, we have the virtualization Azure Cloud, Samba file system server. Uh, we have the network infrastructure and uh, the uh, and the XCAP uh, virtual server for intelligence management. Uh, in order to gather reports and uh, extract uh, do analytics on the data, we use the persona. SMP monitor with NAOS, NAOS in order to extract some reporting over there about our network infrastructure and CACTI. Uh, this is uh, our current architecture and we, we, we are looking forward to go, uh, we are currently starting the journey to, towards OAV and we're looking forward to implement also using uh, the other mapping an extra functionality that, like automation and orchestration in our NREM. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I will uh, freely ask them. That's from me. Thank you, Jacobos. Are there any questions for Jacobos? Maybe not question, uh, Maria. So maybe I forgot to, to add that the document presenting SurfNet architecture will be available soon, right? You can confirm that. So if people are interested to get to, get to know details, so yeah, that, that there will be document. Uh, I have to also, thank you, Roman, for reminding me. I have to say that we have uh, published a document about this uh, 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 CY net auto mapping for all of the entrants that are interested and uh, they can uh, read it 
and start their journey also towards OAV. Thank you very much. Right. In the chat, you can find the link to the currently published CYNET uh, ODA mapping. Thank you very much, Ivana. Okay, you will also have the link to the white papers page in the last slides of, of, the, of the session today. Are there any questions for Roman or for Jacobus about mapping? I would like to encourage you to map your own architecture or your own way of working to this uh, ODA architecture or to this blueprint. So if we can help on any of these questions, you can always contact us and, and we will be more than happy to do that. Okay, so next speaker is me again. And uh, I hope you see my screen, do you see it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, hello again. As you can see, the title of the presentation is Everything You Wanted to Ask About Orchestration, Automation and Virtualization, Time to Ask. And well, I will talk about the OEV training we have prepared, the OEV wiki and the OEV pamphlet. And the words this time to ask, you will see exactly why a little bit later in this presentation. I already talked about the survey and the knowledge gap that was mentioned, and we thought that we had to do something about it. We thought that instead of having a gap, we wanted to facilitate a knowledge transfer. And instead of having these gaps, uh, letting people share this information and, and transfer information from one uh, endron or one institution or one person to another. On the other hand, many endos have not really started uh, automating yet. And if you want to have some training, if you Google for network automation training, you will get more than 250 million uh, possible entries. This shows that there are there is a lot of material out there and it's many tools, platforms, programming languages, concepts like data formats and data modeling. And there are excellent courses out there, but it's easy to get lost because there are so many that you don't know where to start. So that's why we plan to prepare the training focus on the research and education community with external references to external sources, but that can be useful for us and examples that can be closer to us, uh, to our use cases. It's a training by the community and for you, for the community, and we have done it in collaboration with the GIAN Learning and Development Team using the Academy platform and Moodle. So what we want to do is to break this and hopefully the next time we ask uh, about your needs, the first blue Part of this diagram will mention knowledge gaps because you will all know about OAB. How have we structured this training? We have structured it uh, trying to follow the same functional blocks as the ODA architecture somehow. The matching is not perfect because ODA is a functional architecture and we're going to talk about tools, about programming languages, but it makes it easier to follow it. So we start with this introduction big block and follow by DevOps concepts that are needed to go to automation for network engineers and the glue that binds everything together that will be the coupling and integration block and also information about standards standards and commonly used architectures. So the technical block would, would be on the left side that you see here, and, and the less technical block will be on the right side, this is less operational cases. But there are in Android implementation examples that can be useful for anyone, of course. How did we do that? Well, your trainers are here. I introduce you to the trainers of this wonderful training program. You see here, there is a group of diverse people from several entrants around Europe that have experience in OEB and that can help you with the first steps of this journey. Uh, from university professors to network engineers and from managers to developers, uh, we will be publishing one learning unit per week in the next month, starting today. And of course, uh, I put also your name here because if you have experience and you're willing to share it, we will be happy to include collaborations from the community here. And the title of the presentation is Time to Ask because we will have one hour per month for you to ask. We will have questions and answers by video conference on the first Tuesday every month. Just drop us an email and to this email address and we will send you the link to our Zoom room and you will be able to meet us there. We will meet anyway, but we would prefer to have someone from the community to have these questions and answer sessions and know about your needs too and know how to improve the training. 
and we have prepared an ambitious plan but a phased approach to the training where the first two phases are going to be delivered in the next months phase one and phase two are going to be delivered in the next six months for six months from now to june the first phase is in the next three months and the second phase it's from march or from april to june and the idea is that today we publish our first learning unit, then the Christmas break, and from January we will be publishing one uh, one new learning unit per month per per week with this uh, one hour per month to for questions and answers. And of course, if you drop us an email and this time slot is not fine for you, we can find other time slots or have a different session for you if you need it. And this is what we we want to achieve so we will ask you for your feedback it's very important for us to have feedback to decide if we go ahead with the training depending on your feedback and the attendance or if you stop it or if you ch if we change the learning units that we have in mind right now the first two phases are these this is the first one and the introductory learning units are all in the phase one this is the introduction to oab the oab requirements that we found for entrance and the oab architecture blueprint and also we will have an introduction to, to cicd and an introduction to data modeling data formats and protocols and and also some introductions to api and a data the first data modeling and phase formats sessions one about young the other one about json we will also talk about these big blocks in the oda one introduction to engagement management and to core commerce and we will do an introduction to automation orchestration virtualization and configuration management one each week once we have done this, we will go to more technical in-depth learning units. We will have a version control with GitLab, GitLab CI and Jenkins. We will talk about more data models, protocols and formats in the second big block with Tosca, Yang, NetConf, XML and YAML. And we will talk about tools, Docker Swarm, Ansible, Python as a, as a programming language and NSO. We have uh, external links that are useful for that and also internal prepared by us documentation. And regarding standards and commonly used architectures, we will go also more in depth into the TM forum ODA. As we have prepared this uh, phased approach, we have a view of the whole uh, structure of a uh, training if we had the seven phases and it could be just put as a metro map we, we build the metro map in a metro map. You have the lines with uh, which cross to each other. With you have uh, stations that are common to several um, lines, and where you can switch from one to another. You have learning units, or you have stops in the metro map that you don't need to stop in. So we have tried to put all following these TMF ODA principles, these uh, these blocks, this the coupling and integration ideas and this biggest rule where everything that happens in the domain stays in the domain. So we have the green line, that would be the first one. All the learning units or almost all the learning units in the green line are in the first phase. So in the following weeks, you will be, uh, we, we will be releasing these first learning units that are traversing this green metro line. And in the following ones, we will be doing the next. So, so in the second, you will have more technical in-depth uh, learning units. And then if we go ahead with the training, we will have the next one, which is a draft because we can we can change it. Well, you will have more information about GitHub, Bitbucket, gRPC, RESConf, et cetera, and, and more about standards too. And then the fourth one, and then the fifth one, the sixth one, and the seventh one. That would lead us up to September, 2022. So if you want to go through all this training, you have like, half an hour, one hour each week to learn about these things. As I said, today we are releasing our first learning unit. The first learning unit is the introduction to OEB, the benefits, more details on the resources uh, from the GM project and the structure and with all the planned modules and learning units and all the phases uh, there. You can access it. It's in the um, in the e-academy from the GLAD team. And you can use your regular Edugain account or via social networks or a Google account or Facebook or whatever, in case you don't have Edugain uh, access or you don't have your single sign on. And once you are in, well, here is the link to the course. Once you are inside, you can just browse the tabs and you have a quiz at the end to test your knowledge and the training feedback that is important for us to know if we follow with the training 
or not. And you will also get a certificate after its learning unit is a completion certificate. We are not go going to do an official training uh, like one of the of the currently existing uh, vendors or something like this. But it's a, a Jan that Jan is certificate certifying that you are attending this course. And you will see more courses appearing in this platform in the next weeks, as I say, from the from after the, the Christmas. Now you have the first one after Christmas, we will be releasing one each week. This is a training uh, regarding other resources for you. We have created a wiki for knowledge sharing and global exchange where you have information about the entrance and the research and education institutions, all about orchestration, automation, and virtualization, and classified in different sections, dissemination documents, highlights, uh, information about the info shares we have done, architectures, the community portal, etc. There is a lot of information here. Uh, it's constantly updated. Maybe you find that the, the images see when you go there is a little bit different to what you see here because as we are updating it then it can change but if you have anything that you would like us to share in this wiki do not hesitate to contact us it's not a class a closed club it's something to to share information about the community here you will also find the terminology the acronyms the glossary and all the definitions we we put in the in the white paper and you have the link also here and also the architectures. You have a section on architecture explaining the standards we studied and investigated further. And when when we were trying to, to find the blueprint, they are all this here. <clears throat> Not all of them are functional architectures uh, as the TM Forum or DA is, but you can also find, find commonalities between these architectures and, and the functional blocks in OEA. And here also you have links to external information and when we publish white papers about the mappings of new entrants, we will be putting them here too. Today, we also introduce you the OAB wiki page about training. You will see more links appearing in the following weeks. And then it's also something that is constantly updated. And probably the image you will see now, it's a little, a little bit different to this one. And we have the community portal where you have examples of uh, entrants or connected institutions that present their OAV work or provide links to presentations to have more information. This is about the wiki and to help entrants go through the ODA, we have also prepared like a pamphlet or a promotional document where you have a visual way to see what we would like to achieve going from a traditional OSS, VSS via a digital platform to an interoperable community with, uh, which is capable of giving multi-domain services using common APIs and data models. This is our, our vision. For that, we also explain what are the principal the principles and the main concepts of that is architecture with building blocks, this open APIs approach and the usage of orchestration, automation and service abstraction. And we have also written it down in letters, in text. If you don't like the visual image, you also have this and you can download this pamphlet from the wiki. With that, I finish with this presentation. Thank you very much for following this. If you have any questions, I'm ready to take them. Any questions you would like to ask? No? Then I would like to ask you one question. And is, you have seen, we have tried, we, we have done the mapping of SurfNet architecture and the CYNet architecture of SPA. We are starting with other entrants. Would you be interested in having this mapping done for your own use case? It can be very simple or it can be with our help. Would you be interested in that? If, if you are interested in that and you are shy and you don't want to jump in, you can also raise your hand in the participants table. So if you if you raise your hand, would you like to do that with us? No raising hands. Okay, Glenn, I see one raised hand. Thank you. I don't see more hands. So if you don't mind it, you can contact us or we can try to contact you and, and then we can set up a meeting and see if we can help on, on that. And also have, have your feedback about what we have done before. Would you like to say anything about it? Any 
idea? Uh, yes, that would be very helpful. Um, we have a lot of services that might slot into the current model. So um, I think it's a worthwhile exercise for us to at least see if we can map out all of our services um, onto the, uh, the model there. Okay, great. So, well, after the, the Christmas uh, break, we won't forget about you, but now it's it's going to be very difficult to, to set up a meeting. But after the Christmas break, uh, we can contact and, and see how we do that. And Guillermo, I, I see you also raise your hand, I think. Yeah, I'm from RMP in Brazil. So we have many services and we are at this journey to set everything together. And, but the planning I see that is a phase that is very important and we should see this as a priority. Okay, then it's great to have someone from the other side of the Atlantic also wanting to, to do the mapping because offering global services is also an ambition for research and education networks. They go through all the globe. Okay, I also see that we have Sunet doing the mapping in the chat and we are also working with GRNet to, to do the mapping and with Jan to do the mapping so we will have more and more of this and let me show you just one more slide or two in the meantime here it is uh, this is the CYNet mapping that was mentioned before. It's published in this uh, in this link in the JAN website in the white papers on resources part and also the wiki. So as soon as we have more white papers or more mappings, they will be converted into this white paper format and you will have them available in the same web page and also in the wiki. And for now, we have CYNet. SARFnet is nearly, nearly being published very soon. And then we will have more in the next in the next weeks too. You also have the all the presentations uh, of today are in the in the Indico page. And I would also take this opportunity to remind you that there are future work back at six events like the quantum technologies and the European time and frequency services workshop, the workshop on network management and monitoring tools, and the European persona user workshop but just i stopped sharing i would like to see your faces and you see mine okay so i see that uh, some people are are working on this and how about the others would you like to do this training what do you think have you changed your minds uh, since you uh, answered the survey in 2019 are you going to go to more oab now what's your opinion Anyone jumping in? I would point anyone if not. Okay, we saw Jacobos is willing to start and, and CYNet is willing to start. And they have started with this mapping. This is one step. For others that have already started, maybe the training, the first training units won't be the first the ones to see, but you can start with the next ones. And what about others? Who else? Uh, Donal, would you like to jump in and ask, explain what HEA Net is doing? I think you are also interested in mapping your architecture. Uh, we are indeed. And um, uh, we were due to actually talk with Sonia about that, but unfortunately she's not available at the moment. So we're probably going to end up doing some of that in the new year. And I imagine I'll be working with Glenn um, on some of that. Um, since he's expressed interest in mapping the services that we offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, topics that you would like to discuss about orchestration, automation, and virtualization? Or are there any specific topics that are challenging you now as you try and do more automation? What's what's stopping you, or what would help you to do it more efficiently or better? Yes, Simon. 
Yeah, um, I have uh, been tasked since I returned to the network team uh, earlier this year uh, to look into automation, but uh, we see this as more of an um, evolutionary um, activity. So yeah, for me, I'm I'm thinking a lot about where we could, where we have like low hanging fruit, where I could get my my colleagues who have been running this network uh, like the old way, the traditional way for many years um, to use more, um, I don't know, software driven or infrastructure as code or automation and templating uh, mechanisms. I I think there's, there's good material um, on the, um, what is it called? The, uh, the, the there's a Slack channel which is very rich in information. I, I don't find it right now. I think it's like network is code or something. Net, network to code, um, and on Ivan Pepeniak's uh, IP space um, that I I enjoy a lot. Where where these kinds of um, like iterative introduction of automation practices um, are treated. So. I, I'm more um, in favor of this uh, bottom-up approach um, than mapping like what our, what my organization is doing to some architecture that gets handed down from some telco um, uh, organization. But that's just me. It's a legitimate approach. Um, but I, th I think we use this other way. Okay, no problem, and, and, and I think they are compatible anyway. So you sure. can, of course, uh, start your own way. That's a good thing about the biggest rule: you can exactly. do whatever just, just you want. Just working on this layer at the moment. <laughs> this is a, your domain; is your domain, and you can work on it as much as you want and, and start automating uh, as you wish. But of course, I it, think that's. Oh, yeah, sorry, Tim. Sorry, I was just going to say. I think that's one of the things that's it's highlighted by the two examples we presented today with. Um, Cynet and, and Surfnet. I mean, Cynet are the small NREN, they're just starting out and wanting to do automation and obviously Surf are, are, are very advanced relative to many NRENs. So it's very interesting that the that sort of mapping process from that architecture allows both to see how that mapping is relevant to them and it allows you to think in a certain way about the different functions of your organization and how those were arranged. Um, that doesn't force you to use a specific uh, tool or a specific approach, a so-called Vegas rule, but it allows you to think in a certain way that in the future may allow you to more easily share experiences with another NREN who thinks the same way, uh, share code, share tools, share scripts, whatever it happens to be, because you're thinking in that in that same way and you have the same um, mind, you know, the same model in your mind as as you're doing that. So I think that's quite encouraging, having seen those two those two mappings that we've done already. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I would like to stress and that I already told is that uh, automating the same you, do, you did manually is one thing and rethinking your processes and thinking a little bit forward and what you want to achieve and what you can achieve doing automation is not just the same you have now, you can do much more. And if you start thinking on it and you prepare for that, then it's easier when you do the steps. Okay, thanks for the explanations any other questions topics you would like to see it would be very helpful for us if you do the training or at least you send us your feedback telling us what you would like to see because we have prepared a training thinking about you but we don't know if you if we have thought about you in the right way so if you want to have something else that we have not thought about or you would like to see something less that you don't know it's useful useful just please let us know it's because the training is for you yeah I mean, we we're going through this exercise for a few months of, of building some introductory training and some of the more basic concepts um, because when we did the survey that's the thing that most NREN said they would benefit from now as we heard there's plenty of material out there um, the trick of what we're trying to do is to present it in a context that's relevant to the NRENs. So we're providing, when we give examples, there are examples grounded in what the NRENs are doing, like you know, campus networking as a service, which some NRENs are doing and for which automation is, is very important, for example. So um, I think that's all very important. I think one of the things Simon mentioned was you know, there are other resources out there, of course. We're not 
claiming that this training we're building is, is the best, it's that maybe it's the most, most relevant. Um, what we would find useful is people to send us pointers to particular resources that they find very useful and relevant to them. So we can add those as further links to the training material. So for example, the Slack network to code channel or workspace is a very good example that Simon mentioned. That's the sort of thing that we can point to from within that training material that is relevant. Thank you, Tim. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, something that I would like to say, Maria Zambelli, is uh, uh, our uh, mapping to ODA, it's, uh, uh, it was very important for CYNet because uh, taking under consideration our experience uh, with updating software and in compatibility of components, this mapping would help in uh, future updates of our existing system and to be aligned with other components of other elements, source code, open source code, and other elements, or giant services. So in order to have this guarantee, uh, the auto mapping, it was a necessity for CYNET. Thank you. Thank you, Jakobus. Thank you. And as you can see, well, uh, CYNET has mappies without automation in place yet. So like, to start thinking about it. Okay, are there any other topics, questions, discussions you'd like to have today? If not, I think we're closing the session here. Thanks very much for attending and I wish you the best for the new year. I wish you the best for this uh, Christmas season that is starting soon and see you in the next info shares and webinars and workshops are online or probably in the future, not online, but in live sessions. Thank you very much.